everybody, welcome back to Diesel Creek. My name is Matt. This big old hunk of iron I'm standing on right now is my BDH, my big dirty hoe, also known as the Cabelco SK250 LC. There's been some videos on this machine in the past and I have used it extensively on doing the fill here for my building site. I'm trying to get this machine all fixed up so where it looks a little bit more presentable so I can take it out on some jobs. As you guys probably know, I got this machine for a song and a dance. This is a 56,000 pound machine with two buckets and a quick exchange. And I was able to pick this beauty up running, drove it on the trailer, hauled it home for $16,000. So this was the cheapest excavator that I could find anywhere, let alone one this nice. This thing has AM, FM radio and the AC works as well. So I really couldn't beat this thing for the money. Now I don't care if your middle name's Lucky, you're not gonna pick up a machine that cheap and not have a few issues with it. So we did have to fix a broken exhaust manifold and uh, a few other little teeny miscellaneous odds and ends. But cosmetically is where this girl is really suffering. So hopefully by the end of the video, she's gonna be looking right. So I'll give you guys a little close up walk around here so you can see what I'm talking about. This machine had sat for approximately 10 years before I picked it up. And you can see there's just a ton of moldy mildewy i believe that's called lichen growing on here and you can see where all the snails have crawled around and eaten this stuff off of this thing the decals are in extremely tattered and rough shape i mean you can see these ones are just falling right off of there and it's even been defaced at one point somebody putting gang tags on the side of my machine apparently the previous owner did not believe in looking behind them when they would set themselves up to start swinging They've worn, I bet you, 60 to 70% of the paint off of the counterweight. I know uh, old Let's Dig 18 about had a heart attack when he saw that one. Not only did they wipe the paint off the counterweight, they also wiped out the side of the machine here. They really caved in this door pretty good. And even down here, this is some thicker steel, and they managed to smush that in pretty good as well. I'm not sure if I'm going to get carried away trying to pull that out or not, but we're definitely going to try to straighten the panel doors out and get those fixed up and looking a lot better. But the story's the same on this side. Tons of moss, lichen growing. The decals are all basically gone on this side. Up front here, under the boom, we've got a whole little small miniature ecosystem going on inside the house. There's plenty of plants growing in there, lots of moss, about six inches of dirt in around the, uh, the swing motor. Around the pivots here, we got about four inches of grease built up over the years, so I'll give them credit. They did at least grease the machine. You can tell that. And then down here, of course, we got a bunch more moss growing, more plants, and uh, it just keeps going. So, hopefully, we can get this old girl shining and looking a lot better. You can just see how extensive and nasty everything is growing in here. I think it's inside of this panel yeah there's a whole moss bed growing inside of this panel look at that we gotta get this thing cleaned out this is unacceptable i am not a neat freak by any means but uh this is bad even for me i can't stand it so for the first time in well over 10 years i'm gonna guess we're gonna get this thing scrubbed up and hopefully looking right and then once this thing is nice and clean i think we might be doing a little bit of body work maybe a little bit of painting and I've got an entire new decal set we're going to be putting on this machine. And uh, by the end of the video, this thing's going to be looking like a million bucks. A poor outward appearance is also complemented well by the disgusting inside cab appearance. Now, I have not made this any better since I got it, but the floor was already covered in dirt when I got the machine, as well as about 10,000 redneck diamonds. The seat's pretty tattered up. I'm not sure that we're gonna worry about that just yet. And there's still a load of garbage in here from the previous owners down behind the seats that I'm gonna get out of here. So while we're at it, we'll give this cab a good scrub too, make it a little bit nicer place to spend 10 hours. Project.
thought that was all rust. the machine now I'm sure you guys can see it is bad up here this is definitely the worst area on the machine look at that this yeah this is gonna be a nice one this is I really love seeing this transformation probably won't believe me but that took two whole days to do this there was a lot of pressure washing I went through oh I think a little over a thousand gallons of water 
but man it it looks like a completely different machine you've obviously seen a uh, cut down hyperlapsed version of all the cleaning but I spent a lot of time on this thing I went over the whole machine the whole machine probably two or three times and the really tough spots like underneath the boom here where it was just gobs and gobs and gobs of grease I probably hit this area 20 times I mean it's one of those things you blast a bunch of grease and I scraped you know the most of it that I really could I don't even think I showed that but I scraped it all off by hand as best I could and then you hit it with the pressure washer and it just splatters grease all up over this thing and that thing and everything and uh, down inside the house there you can see it's still got grease splattered on things and there's just nothing I can do about it I mean without spending another thousand gallons of water and uh, a whole bunch more time repeatedly blasting and blasting it's gonna be covered in grease there's just nothing you can do about it but the parts you can see turned out really good the paint brightened up considerably I'm really happy with it I need to get some more of this stuff here this uh, instant grime cutter by Berkey B oil this stuff worked great it actually brightens up the paint in the places that the grease was now that could be partially because the uh, the grease was covering the paint and it never allowed it to fade but I think it actually brightens the paint a little bit you can see right here in this spot I had some run down on the paint and when I blasted it it lightened the color up a little bit which is what it's supposed to look like um, all the other areas are oxidized I would assume so I was happy with this stuff I'm gonna have to get some more but yeah I mean just look at how nice and clean this area is now before we had piles of moss in there and grease and everything else really happy with that the counterweight is probably the area that I was most impressed with I mean you guys saw it before it was all it was almost all brown like that I thought it was all rusted over it was actually just severely covered in algae so I was on the fence about it but I guess I'm gonna go ahead and repaint this counterweight it does look like hell I uh, I don't know that I'm gonna go crazy and you know bondo up all the divots and stuff in it probably just gonna give it a uh, Ritchie Brothers overhaul and call that good enough I'm not trying to restore this machine so much as just uh, you know make it look a little more presentable but I started to peel some decals off over here because like I said I have a whole new set to go on this machine so uh, yeah we'll get you guys set up and I'm gonna finish peeling these decals the ones on the back and the ones on the other side of the machine Oh, there we go. It's been hard to get a nice big peel on this thing. got all these decals removed here that was quite a chore back here where the machine has been swung into things over the years um, the stickers were really tattered up and you couldn't get any nice big pieces off you had to sit there and take every little teeny scrap of uh, decal off little bit by little bit but uh, tell you what one thing I'm impressed about you know heat guns they suck up quite a bit of power this 
This company sent me this 2000 watt power supply a while ago to try out and I was pretty skeptical of it. I thought these things were pretty gimmicky, but actually I've been, I used the heat gun for probably two hours here. Now granted, I wasn't using the heat gun wide open, but uh, we're only down one bar on the batteries. I've been using this thing to run the lights in the shop and all kind of stuff. It's uh, it's pretty nice. You don't have to sit here and listen to a generator humming the whole time, but it, uh, it works quite well. So, if you're interested in that thing, I'll put a link down in the description. All right, on full-size excavators like this, when you're sitting in the cab, you have some mirrors, and you can see down the sides of the machine pretty decently. But you can't really see the tail, and that is why the counterweight looks the way it does on this machine. Um, or, well, I'm not going to say that's why, but when you're backing up to certain things, it does make it a lot nicer. Some newer machines have cameras on them, and that uh, is a definite big help there. So, I went to uh, skidsteercabs.com and picked me up one of these eTerra universal equipment cameras, and we're going to get it installed on this machine. Yeah, so this is not one of those cheapo depot cameras you can get off uh, Scamazon or Fleabay. This is uh, supposed to be a better unit here and actually made for heavy duty, rugged environments such as this. So, comes with the actual camera here as well as. fancy pants monitor and see what I really like to see about this unit is this isn't like a plastic framed little cheapo LCD this is nice weather tight you can see it's all sealed up very well this is an aluminum housing it's machined out it's very nice this is a solid monitor I bet you I, I don't want to say this wrong because I didn't read that thing, but I, this is probably weather resistant. Just looking at the way they have everything sealed up and the way this thing's designed, it's probably weather resistant. So you could even put this onto an open cab machine, I'm guessing. I'll probably confirm on the screen there with some text because uh, I'm too lazy to read this right now. Whole bag of peanuts. Found the headrest to the seat. Manual for the quick coupler. A gas shock for something.
have our camera mounted there. I tack welded that little piece of angle iron over top of the wire so that we're not gonna get it caught and ripped on anything. I whipped up this little, uh, just a limb deflector basically, in case you get into some tree branches or whatever. It'll uh, keep you from ripping the camera off, but I'm gonna wait till we have the camera installed and connected so that I can see how far forward I can slide this thing before it interferes with our view. All right, I bent up that little bracket right there and I'm gonna weld the monitor mounting bracket to it, like so. All right, so we got our monitor mounted here in the cab nicely. It's uh, pretty rigid, should be good enough for what we're doing here. And I did have to chop and modify the mounting bracket quite a bit, but the reason I had to do that was because, you see how close that door gets to the bracket there? Very, very close, but it does ultimately clear now, just barely without touching, so. That's good enough. It keeps the monitor tucked down there nice and in the corner where it's out of the way. It's not an obstruction to the view. So yeah, all we should have left to do is run a couple wires and we're gonna be done with the camera. All right, well, I got the monitor all mounted. So I pulled off the plastic down here on the side of the cab. I tied in the uh, hot wires as necessary and I just piggybacked them into the hot feet off the uh, hour meter. Hopefully that doesn't pop any fuses, but it was the uh, closest and easiest to hook into. <clears throat> So we got the little LED lit up on the screen here. Let's see if this thing's gonna turn on. Aha! Uh -huh. Cool, that should work. All right, well I think routing that wire was the biggest pain of this whole installation and that's nothing to do with the camera system. It's just cause the, uh, the machine here doesn't exactly lend itself to wire routing too well. So we ran the wire down there from the top of the counterweight, tied it onto the uh, existing harnesses here, runs up towards the cab. I was able to get it up under here and run it up through where the uh, pilot lines run up into the bottom of the cab. Pulled it out of the pilot line conduit down there, fished it in behind the plastic all the way, tucked it in, and now right here at the monitor we're finally ready to plug this thing in and hope the camera works. There we go. These plugs have a nice screw connection on them too so they're not going to shake and rattle and vibrate out over time. Got that connection ni nice and tight. Moment of truth here. Does the camera work? <laughs> Look at that. We have got picture. That is nice to see. Good deal. Now I can button up all my uh, plastic here in the cab. I'm going to wipe everything down with some armor all while I'm at it. And uh, yeah. Well, we got the cab all put back together here. Everything's good. So we can finally peel this screen protector off of here. <sighs> Look at that. This is going to be nice. This panel's pretty mangled. Let's try and straighten it out a bit. I got my body hammer here. Y'all better hold your ears. It's not perfect, but once steel's stretched, there's only so much you can do about it. So, it's a lot better than it was.
All right, you know, we got all the decals removed now, but there's still a whole bunch of the residue from the adhesive on here. So I'm just gonna go over everything with some wax and grease remover, and that'll take that adhesive off and make us a nice good surface for uh, putting the new graphics on. The paint tip keeps clogging up on these things. If you guys have any special tips on how to clean out the valve in the can after it's clogged, I know there's ways you can store the paint properly or it doesn't happen in the first place, but the reality is it still happens sometimes. So if you know how to clean out the valve on the cans, let me know. Goodness. That's it, I'm going to buy a new can. Ah! All right, 20 minutes and $30 later, I got some cans that hopefully actually spray now. And of course, they didn't have gray, I guess. It looked gray in the store, it's black. Oh, it figures. Yeah, under fluorescent light, they look gray. They spray black. Wonderful. Results should be the same, I guess. They're close. As you can tell, I'm not going for a professional uh, automotive style finish here anyway. I'm just trying to spruce the back end of this thing up a little bit so it doesn't look like it's been through a world war or something. I'm not fixing any of the putty that's cracked up or redoing any of the Bondo work, none of that. Just, just making it look decent again from far away. It's a working machine. It'll probably end up getting scratched up again in the future. No sense going crazy and then crying over it when you scratch it, in my opinion. Paint doesn't make them run.
you think, Roscoe? Is it yellow? No. Well, it's yellow, but it doesn't really match like it was supposed to. I brought the color swatch book from the parts store and matched it to the unfaded paint there that was underneath the decals. Took it back, said this is the correct swatch here. They supposedly matched it to the, the swatch and it doesn't quite match. Um, I'm sure putting a black primer underneath didn't help, but at the same time, I don't think it would do what it did. I think maybe another coat would help darken it up a little bit, but uh, that's expensive paint, and uh, I burnt through a quart of it doing that, so I don't know. I, I'm really hesitant to go spend another $200 on another quart of paint. As for all the dings and dents and scratches and all of that stuff, I'm sure I'm going to take a lot of flack for not fixing all that stuff up first, but you know what? It's an excavator. It's going to get used and abused some more. It doesn't need to look perfect. I just wanted it to be yellow again, and by God, it is yellow. So I guess mission accomplished there. Let's put some decals back on this thing. Okay, well, I am by no means a professional decal installer. In fact, these are gonna be some of the biggest decals I've ever installed. But my thought process here is I'm gonna use a little bit of painter's tape to hold them in position from the top so that they hang nice. One thing nice, with the paint being faded, I can tell exactly where the bottom of the decal is supposed to be. This is not going in my favor here. One wrinkle here. Ah. Uh, this is not going as planned. Thank goodness I was able to save that. I'm really nervous there for a minute. There's still a couple bubbles, but I should be able to hit this with the heat gun and uh, get them out of it. All right, I like that one.
probably didn't quite get the numbers to line up perfectly with the old ones, so you can kind of see a little bit of an outline from the faded paint, but from six feet away, I can't tell it. Looks good. Well, that takes care of all the decals on the sides of the machine. The only thing on the left I have to do is put this big Cabelco on the back of the counterweight here, but the more I look at this putrid shade of yellow, I can't do it. I, I, I'm going to have to respray this thing, so I don't want to put the decal on and waste it. So This is going to be a slightly darker shade of yellow the next time you see it. As you can see, the uh, work lights on the boom here have seen some better days. They are smashed, bent, mangled, all of the above. But I got some nice LED replacements we can put on here. And we should be able to see great in the dark. So for work lights, I picked up another, another set of these uh, Prime Lux LED lights these are the same lights that i put on fat alice the wheel loader and i've had them on there for probably going on a year now and man i love these lights they are super bright you guys ready bam <laughs> how you like that these things are super bright and uh i haven't had any condensation get in behind the lens which is what happens with a lot of the cheaper led lights this is an all aluminum housing back here. The only plastic on the whole thing is the lens itself. So, I really like these lights, I'm a big fan. If you're interested, I'll leave a link down in the description. All right, we've got lights. Oh yeah, I see light on this one. That one's good. Around here, bang! <laughs> yeah, there we go. That's two beautiful LED work lights. Oh yeah, it's like staring at the sun. And then this machine also has one halogen left in there. And that, that light doesn't do a whole lot, but it's fine for what we're doing. But I really like these lights. They run on either 12 or 24 volts. I think they actually go up to like 48 volts maybe. I can't remember exactly, but they're definitely good for 24. Um, and like I said, they've been holding up really well on Fat Alice, so I've been super happy with those, and yeah, they should be good on this machine as well.
Well, I guess overall, I am very happy with the results here. I think this machine uh, looks like it's worth a lot more than I paid for it now. No matter what it looked like, I did get a heck of a deal on it. If you remember, I only spent $16,000 for this machine, and uh, it's 100% there. All I had to do really was change the exhaust manifold on it. But cosmetically, she was a little lacking. Now, I will say that I'm pretty disappointed with that counterweight color, as I mentioned before. It's basically just $200 down the drain because, uh, yeah, it, it does not look good at all. But other than that, the old girl looks pretty good, I'd say. The graphics turned out nice. Just this stinking counterweight. That's why I left the paper on it and everything. And uh, like I said, didn't put that decal on the on the counterweight because I'm just going to have to paint over it. Decals turned out good on this side as well. The ones on the boom looked good beforehand. She's looking nice. I didn't go crazy cleaning up the cab, but I did spend a little bit of time in here with the shop vac and some armor all and I went crazy and cleaned all the windows really good and man just that alone makes a huge difference in the operating experience let me fire this thing up now and i'll show you guys this camera in action So yeah, really happy with that camera. That's that's gonna be really nice. You know, especially when you're working in tight areas or in the woods or whatever and you think you're gonna back up next to a tree or something or sometimes you don't notice a tree, this thing will make it a lot easier to see trees behind you so that the counterweight doesn't end up looking like it used to. All right, guys. Well, overall, I guess I'm happy with the fruits of our labor here on the old Cabelco. I think it's uh, looking a far sight better than when I bought it, and it should serve me well for years to come. If you guys like this kind of content, if you would, do me a big favor. Hit that thumbs up button down below the video. It really helps out the channel and uh, doesn't cost you guys a thing. And, of course, if you haven't already, it'd mean a lot to me and old Roscoe here if you'd hit that subscribe button down below. That way you don't miss any... That way you don't miss any videos coming up in the future. Also, if you want to help support the channel and do it in style, you can go over to the merch store at dieselcreek.com, pick yourself up a very stylish hat or beer koozie or a t-shirt or some stickers or plenty of other things we have for sale over there. The link's down in the description. You'll be glad you did. Anyways, I think that's a wrap. Old Roscoe's getting hungry here. I better get home and get him some kibble. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Huh. You gonna be in the next video, buddy? Yeah? You gonna get down? Nice and easy. Good boy! <laughs> Later, guys.